Hey there, welcome to the Element 4 ex Amateur Extra exam study time. This is Sub Element 4 Alpha. It's some deep stuff, so I hope you've got your mud boots on. Let's get started. Which of the following limits the highest frequency signal that can be accurately displayed on a digital oscilloscope? And that answer is sampling rate of the analog to digital converter. And the way that this works is your analog to digital converter, it measures things in analog, computes that short segment into a digital value. And so if the range of the frequency of that ADC is not enough, then it's going to cause errors. And that error is called aliasing. And that's when the sample rate is too low. The sample rate really should be about two times the frequency that's being input, and that is called the Nyquist folding frequency. But if you look over here, bottom right, where it says no, you can see that the waveform that is measured is not quite a good accurate representation. If you go to 3-bit, it's a little bit better. And 4-bit quantization is much better, but also it, the amount of time and the number of samples that you make makes a huge difference. And you can see to the left of that one, there's some more basic samples. And you can see that even if the frequency is higher than the frequency being measured, if it's not high enough, it gives you a very awkward waveform. So the more samples per that waveform, the better. The top one shows you points measured along this, this uh, time frame, and it is not good. You can see that the red is what is going to be the output of that sample, that looks nothing like the input. So I hope that that sheds some light on what sampling rate would look like. It's like if you close your eyes and had someone walking in front of you and you opened it only once a second, you're not going to see every movement of that person. You have a general idea about where they were headed or what they were doing, but you might miss where they snatched a purse. Okay, so... Now that's the best way I can uh, try to help you understand what a sampling rate is. Which of the following parameters does a spectrum analyzer display on the vertical and horizontal axis? It's just a graph. And a spectrum analyzer analyzes a spectrum. Now, if you have an ICOM 7300 or a Shigu X6100 or 6200 or you name a rig with a nice pretty screen on it, that is a spectrum analyzer of sorts. It shows you the signals, amplitude, and the frequency across a band. I do have an image of one of those right here. This is a true spectrum analyzer, and you can see that the center frequency on the uh, display on the right, and then you have a bunch of noise and stuff that kind of tailors off. If you look at the screen of that spectrum analyzer, it has your fundamental frequency, and then it shows some harmonics going off. And so that is what a spectrum analyzer can be used for. It's looking for some of those spurious thingies. So how is compensation of an oscilloscope probe performed? I have a video for this. A square wave is displayed and the probe is adjusted until the horizontal portions of the displayed wave are as nearly flat as possible. Now the only issue with this video coming is that I think that my oscilloscope probe adjustment is broken because nothing really changed. You can see it flicker a little bit, but you want to see a nice flat square wave and you can see where the probe is plugged into what is called the probe compensation. And so it just happens to be a one kilohertz square wave. What is the purpose of using a prescaler with a frequency counter? So a prescaler can reduce the signal frequency to within the counter's operating range. So 
I don't know much about frequency counters, but I'm going to make a guess that says that if you reduce that signal frequency to what's within the count the counter's operating range, you can extrapolate what the frequency is. But the answer from this test is reduce the signal frequency to within the counter's operating range. Otherwise, you're going to get an invalid result. What is the effect of aliasing on a digital oscilloscope when displaying a waveform? And as I showed you earlier, that's going to be a false, jittery, low frequency version of the waveform that will be displayed. So the reason it's going to jitter is because it's not going to be a true measurement. So it's going to be jumping around as, um, as it tries to get that information and, and display it. Which of the following is an advantage of using an antenna analyzer compared to an SWR bridge? Antenna analyzers are like little teeny tiny computers. An SWR bridge is more of an analog device. Antenna analyzers compute the standing wave ratio and impedance automatically. So if we go look at some of these devices, to the left you have an antenna analyzer. And it does just that. I have that exact model. Next you have a directional watt meter. I do not own one of these. They are a little more costly. And that little guy with the arrow on it, the little circle, is called a slug. And there's one for, I believe, just about every band and power rating. And then you have a vector network analyzer. And if you're studying for your extra and you haven't heard about a nano VNA, I'm just going to say it. What rock have you been living under? Uh, Nano VNA is is a really cool and inexpensive test device, and there are going to be quite a few more questions about that in just just a second. Which of the following is used to measure SWR? All of these choices are correct, and let's go back to the picture. That would be a directional watt meter. It would be a vector network analyzer or an antenna analyzer. All those choices are correct. Which of the following is good practice when using an oscilloscope probe? You want to minimize the length of the probe's ground connection. And the reason being is you'll get some stray capacitance, stray inductance, and other forms of disturbances. And you can see that my ground on my oscilloscope probe is only about four inches long. So there's not really a lot of play when it comes to connecting to the ground. Which trigger mode is most effective when using an oscilloscope to measure a linear power supply's output ripple? And that is going to be the line. Now, I do have a line measurement on my oscilloscope. And unfortunately, that source is the AC line. But the AC line is basically the same line that they're talking about. If there was a AC to DC converter with a filter on it, then you should be able to watch as that filter is charged and discharged in line or in time with that AC line, which here in America is 60 hertz. So it, it'll use it to help you measure that line. Which of the following can be measured with an antenna analyzer? All these choices are correct. That nano VNA can do velocity factor through your coax. It can do the cable length of a piece of coax. It can do the resonant frequency of a tuned circuit. And so that nano VNA that thing is amazing, and if you don't own one and you want to mess around with it, or if you just want to see one in action, I tell you, uh, Alan at Tech, Whiskey 2, Alpha Echo Whiskey, he does not sponsor me, I don't sponsor him, we're good ham radio buddies across the airwaves and the Twitter X, but he has some great videos on showing what you can do with a Nano VNA. 
I'm Rob, W1RCP, and we'll see you on the next one.